guys, what's up? It's Scoundrel here, and today we're going to be talking about Tilt. Now, for those of you that aren't long-time competitive gamers, you might not know much about the term, so let's look at the history and the background of it. Tilt was originally a term coined to describe competitive poker players who, through one reason or another, be it a bet gone wrong, or they misread a hand, or they misread an opponent, end up playing worse then they are usually expected to do so, making poor decisions, resulting in them playing worse and worse and probably losing a lot of money. Now, there's several reasons that poker players can go on tilt, but it results in them having a lower than expected performance by themselves or by spectators watching them. And that causes a downward spiral of play. Tilt itself brings on many emotions. Now, I myself experience Tilt on a regular basis. When I am recording audio for a video and I get it wrong, and I keep getting it wrong, I tilt. I get frustrated at myself that I can't say the right words. I get angry, you know, I get annoyed, confused as to why I'm not being able to do what I want to do. My mouth's not working the way I want it to work, and I end up getting worse and worse. This is similar to gameplay, and I'm sure you guys have all felt this in one way or another. You know, there's many reasons in competitive gaming that you feel tilted. Let's talk about Vainglory, for instance. You could have a trolling teammate. You could have uh, your teammates feeding. You could have an AFK teammate. You could be playing worse than you you usually do for one reason or another. A, A losing spree could bring on this emotion. And I'm sure you've all felt one of these emotions that you can see on the screen when playing a competitive game. And this results in several different outcomes. Tilt gives you a whole flurry of negative emotions that result in poor decision making, toxicity. You know, uh, you, I'm sure you've all spammed, pinged on, on occasion, but you can be toxic towards your teammates, which is going to help neither yourself or your teammates to perform better. You get a failure to rectify or even acknowledge your own mistakes and then therefore fail to improve. You try to make plays, especially when you're, you're you're frustrated with your teammates. You think that they aren't playing correctly. So you try to make overly aggressive plays to carry the game. Or you're just too passive. You just don't make any plays for fear of it going wrong. Because you're the one that you feel is performing badly. You can get ranked anxiety after losses. You can say, I don't want to play ranked anymore because I'm afraid of losing all that hard work that I put in. And obviously a downward spiral of personal performance. That's really the main part of tilting. It's a, If you don't rectify tilt, you can get worse and worse and worse and worse, doing you know significant damage to your rank standing or just your confidence in your own gameplay. And that can be really hard to deal with. So what is the science behind tilt? What happens in our brains? So we're going to look at the human brain now. And that's so we get an understanding about where in the brain tilt occurs. And just, it's more of like a a cool science lesson for you guys as well. And we're going to delve into the different parts of the brain that are associated with different things. And all of those things in some way relate to tilt. Now, there is a model of the brain which talks about lobes. There is medically defined lobes of the brain. And we're going to look at one half of the brain here. Obviously, this is reflected as we have two halves of our brain. There is the frontal, the parietal, the temporal, the occipital, and the cerebellum in the simple forms of lobes on our brain. Obviously, there's a lot more structures in the brain, inside the brain, but these are the major lobes on the neocortex. Now, the frontal lobe is one of the lobes that you need to be concerned about with tilt. It is our rational thought. It's our consequence of actions. It defines our personality, and it also gives us our emotional responses. This is the lobe that is primarily behind your thought, your decision making, anything that it comes to in game, like deciding when to make a move, deciding how to CS, all of that stuff comes from your frontal lobe. The other lobe to be concerned with is the temporal lobe. Now, this is the lobe that is concerned with learning, hearing and feeling and often gives our emotional response. It allows us to store memories and assign an emotional response to that memory and so on and so forth. Those two lobes are the primary indicators when it comes to the response that we get from tilt. But there's an even more simple model of the brain that we can delve into when looking at tilt, and this is the evolutionary brain. The evolutionary brain is a brain that was defined to give some evidence towards the fact that our predecessors were at some point reptilian or and evolved into mammal and so on and so forth. And what it shows is that we have three major areas of the brain. 
We'll start with the lowest, which is the reptilian brain. This is our instinct brain. This is what um, the very lowest form of brain that a life form that can, with a brain can have. And it basically gives very basic movement, reflex type things. And it's our instinct brain. It gives us our primal instincts. There is the limbic brain, which is known as the emotional brain. This is the brain that gives us emotions, response to emotions, social interactions at a basic level. Uh, and you find that a lot of mammals have this, for instance. And then we have the neocortex brain. And this is the very top layer of brain called our thinking brain. And this is the brain that is associated with rational thought, decisions, logical movements, logical um, sort of approaches to situations, problem solving, all that kind of stuff comes in our thinking brain. And obviously, animals across the world have varying levels of these brains, but the human brain is a fully developed form of all three. And each of them have individual roles in tilt. So there were two really good videos that I watched on YouTube to help get some inspiration for this, one of which was by a guy called The Scrap Computer, the other by GBay99, and both of them I will link in the description below. And they really summarise some of the scientific points, and I'll talk about them each individually, because I, I, obviously me, having studied medicine at university, have a bit of an understanding about what they were going into, and I'm helping to maybe summarise it and bring it to you in a more simple form. Now, Scrap Computer talked about the three areas of the brain, the reptilian, the limbic, and the neocortex, and he talked about them in greater detail. He said that the, you know, the neocortex is the area where your decision-making and logical thought happens. This is the most developed area of the brain. This is the human area of the brain that we use when faced with situations in-game, and we want to find a decision to react to it. So this is the area that you want switched on when you're gaming. You want this area to be on full 100% mode. Obviously, you know, being able to deal with new situations, being able to problem solve rotations, matchups, CS, item builds, you know, adapting, that kind of stuff all comes through the use of your neocortex. This often relies on being fed information by a part of the limbic brain system called the amygdala. The limbic brain system is emotional learning. It's memory recall. So you'll learn to deal with certain situations by having experienced them and having the limbic brain give you the response necessary. And that can feed information to the neocortex to give you a heightened sense of decision making, even when faced with an emotional situation. In team fights, your heart can race because you are nervous about how things are going, but you have faced those kind of situations before, so you know where to position, you know who to focus, and good, instant team fight decision making comes from a mix of your limbic brain and your neocortex working together. And it, it's really important to have them both switched on and functioning at a full capability. An ideal situation is having every single part of your brain working on the right area of the game. Your neocortex on the logical things, the decision making, your limbic on memory recall and emotional responses, and your reptilian brain on the reflexes, the very core parts of your movements and your mechanical play. All three in, in sort of Symphony will give you the best possible outcome. Tilt happens when things go wrong with the amygdala, and that's what we talked about in GBay 99s video when he was talking about something called the amygdala hijack. Now, the amygdala is a part of the brain which has both instinctual and learning experience associated with it. Instinctual is in the sense that the amygdala will know to initiate a fight or flight response when you're faced with a saber-toothed tiger. You will know that's bloody scary and you need to run away. And that is partly from the response that the amygdala gives your brain. It shuts down logical decision-making and suddenly it becomes this instinctual, uh, sort of primal decision-making machine that says, okay, you need to bloody run or you're going to pick up a sphere and spear and fight the saber-toothed tiger. It's the same that you know how to flinch if you're getting hit. That's the exact line that Jibei used. So the amygdala has that really useful part because it gives you those necessary decision-making outcomes. 
The problem is that we have evolved so quickly and technology has evolved so quickly that the amygdala doesn't know how to deal with an AFKing teammate. The amygdala doesn't know how to deal with a teammate that is playing badly or feed, feed, feeding. The amygdala doesn't know that you really want to hit Vain Glorious this season and if you don't do it, you'll be really sad. And often when working towards these goals or being faced with these situations, the body doesn't actually know how to respond properly because you've never really had the long human evolution of being faced with XXX Sniper 420 who AFKs in your match. So it gives you these very emotionally driven and primal responses, which is what we call tilt. So when you are experiencing those kind of emotions, it's because your amygdala has not been exposed to it enough to be able to deal, allow you to deal with it properly. And that's what you uh, Jibei described, described as the amygdala hijacker. That was a coin termed in about 1996. So dealing with this and using the amygdala to its function is a really good way of trying to get around it because the amygdala is about emotional learning. And so approaching tilt in the right way can actually help you learn and respond differently when faced with the same situation, which is why when we talk about how to deal with tilt, we'll talk about the emotional learning response that you should have when dealing with tilt. The more and more that you force yourself to accept that it is out of your control and focus on your own gameplay, the less and less frustrated you're going to get when it happens, because it is a natural emotional response to the amygdala through the emotional learning part of it. So let's talk about how to deal with tilt in more detail. So one thing that you'll hear a lot of people talk about when trying to avoid tilt is stop caring about wins. And actually, that is incredibly hard to do. If you like a game, and what makes a game good is the fact that you emotionally invest yourself in the competitive nature of a game. That's why Vainglory is so good. It's a hugely skill-based competitive game. And you emotionally invest yourself in your own performance, your team's performance, and the outcome of that, which is climbing the ranks. But there are ways that you can look at this situation and think about it in a different way. I'll take an example from Hearthstone. Hearthstone players play upwards of a thousand or more games a month. If they lose three games in a row, that is 0.3% of their total gameplay. If they play a thousand games and have lost three in a row, that is 0.3% of all of their games. So then you look at it in the grander picture, you might have lost three games in a row, sure, that might warrant that you take a break, and that's a really good way of avoiding tilt. If you lose three in a row, I always do this, I take a break. No matter what I'm doing, even if I'm streaming, I go and play some Blitz or I play some Normals or Casuals, because I don't want to keep playing ranked when I'm in the mindset of having just lost three in a row. But then you look at it in the bigger picture, it's actually a very small sample size in your overall games. And that leads me on to my next point, that... Over these games, even though your primary focus should be to win, your secondary and arguably one of the you know, potentially more important focuses is your ability to improve and learn from your decisions. After a game that I lose, I think about why we lost. Now, it's arguable that, yes, you have an AFK, you can't learn much from that, but there are will be situations even if you have trolls, AFKs, or bad teammates, where you personally could have done something to increase your score, play a, a 1v1 better, CS better, or even potentially step up and carry the game. Because I have won two versus threes. It is possible. I have done it quite a few times in Vainglory. In fact, Vainglory is one of the only games where I've ever had the opportunity to two versus three. So at the end of every loss, I think about what exactly went wrong. The Vainglory replay function is really good for this. You can go back and look at your game and think about what exactly went wrong for you in what situation and how you should look to improve that. And from that game, and this is the way I always suggest to improve, note down why you died after you after a death, right? Note down what happened and how you died. And then you think about it after the game and think, what could I have done to improve that? Was it my positioning? Was I out of position without vision? Was I taking a fight that I just was too behind to take? Was it the fact that I mechanically missed my reflex block at a crucial moment? Or was I maybe a little bit separated from my team? Was my team fight positioning off? I note why it happened. And then I have it on a page in front of me to think about going into the next game. So that when I'm presented with that situation, I always have that piece of information there saying, well, you were behind last time, Excoundrel. 
you're a little bit out of position in the team fight, make sure you really focus on your positioning this game. Make sure you really focus on how you are responding to your team and to the enemies in a team fight situation. And over time, it will help you improve. And uh, even though you'll be faced with trolls, even though you'll be faced with AFKers, if you get better, you will climb. Vainglory is one of the only games I have played where you can physically solo carry a game if you are better than everybody there. And that should be your primary goal when playing Vainglory or any competitive game. You should really be focusing on improvement to make sure that you are the best. You are the best in your game and that will allow you then to be better than everybody else and that will eventually allow you to climb. Because one of the examples that I use, guys, is that Smurfs exist, okay? Now, if you are not, if, if it has absolutely nothing to do with your individual skill, how could Smurfs climb to Vainglorious so quickly? They'd be arguably facing the same trolls and AFK as that people would be in your rank usually, but why is it that they climb so quickly? Well, it's because they're just better. Now, I'm not condoning Smurfs, obviously. I think Smurfs can be really frustrating to play against, but it, pro it proves a point that you should think about the fact that personal improvement should be the utmost priority when climbing the ranks and trying to improve at a game. And that often helps me sort of get past tilt. When I lose a game, it's like, okay, I lost a game. I didn't do enough that game. I could have done more. Yes, my teammates may not have performed the way I wanted them to, but that is outside of my control. And that's another thing that should be really um, thought about here, that you can't control your teammates, but you can control yourself. So it's all about thinking about it in the right light. You can control what you do. You can't control what your teammates do. Focus on yourself. So there's a couple of things that I do actually physically to avoid tilting as well. Not only my mentality, but also physically you can do things to help avoid tilt. I often don't play when I've drunk caffeine or high sugar or eaten a lot of sugar because you get very irritable when you have had caffeine or sugar and you often are sort of more likely to overreact or go on tilt when you've had those particular substances. I also take a break after having lo lost three games and then do something that is less high stakes where I don't care about the outcome. Play another game that is single player, I play casual, I, I play blitz, and I don't really care about the outcomes of those things and it helps me reset and find my focus again. I also go for walks uh, or even just take a break in general. I don't play when I'm hungry or thirsty either. Those two influences can affect your thoughts. How often is it that you're playing and you're hungry and all you can think about is how much you want to eat food? That impacts your ability to think about the game and make decisions as well and often can help you play worse and then unfortunately put you on tilt. I also listen to relaxing music. I listen to classical music. I listen to uh, revision playlists on Spotify. I listen to something called Brain FM, which is a really cool website which has um, music that is supposed to help your brain concentrate. It's definitely helped me anyway, and I've really enjoyed listening to it. So really relaxing music can help you focus. And try not to listen to high-intensity intrusive music that causes your brain to react. I often find... Um, music without words means your brain's not interpreting the words as the music's going along, especially if it's not your first language. It means it gives you more processing power to your ability to approach the game, which is why I often like to listen to uh, classical music, which is also where I found my uh, opening theme, because I do love listening to classical music, because it helps improve my performance. And like I said, noting down what's gone wrong, noting down the mistakes, or even just talking to someone about maybe external influences that are in, in, sort of influencing your game. If you've fallen out with a friend, your parents have annoyed you, often just talking about that to somebody that you know, a friend of yours, can help you get rid of that issue for the moment and focus on the gameplay. So always thinking about external issues and how they influence your game. Never play when you're already angry or upset, because you're only likely to get more angry and upset at the game if it goes wrong. So always try and play when you're in a really calm state of mind and that will help you approach the game in a better way. Anyway, this is a, a video that I wanted to do just talking about Tilt. I hope it has been useful and I will see you soon, guys. Um, I'm going to be doing a video about the new best weapon power builds this week. So that'll be a good one that I hope you enjoy and I will see you soon.